did it again with a different thing, and it was, we're, we're just on the line. Okay, okay. So, uh, let's get out notes. As some of you have seen on Canvas, I'm putting, um, and, and on YouTube, I'm putting like the uploads of these, uh, these videos there. And Kennedy's like, I gotta redo them for him. I it, yeah, it like, looks like Halloween. Halloween. Like, it's like, it's like, it looks a little, yeah, but yeah. Yours are just so pretty, and his are not. As I scuff them, I, I appreciate that. But, but it is there. So, um, guys, I do want to say um, and get out the notes that these uploads will be on Canvas. Uh, they have been the last couple of days. They'll continue to be. Um, they'll be on YouTube. So, just send me the assignment for like notes. You'll see these. So, if anybody's sick, I've had a student who like didn't want to get ostracized. Like, poor girl, she just has a bad cold, and she's like, I don't have COVID. So she's out for a couple days just personally. Um, and if any of you are in that boat, you can you know, go in there and see them and just continue with the sequencing that we have. Uh, I was telling Heather and Dane at the beginning, you were wondering first for absences of like, where is everybody? Uh, yeah, I'll be interested to see there's a couple meetings happening today in regards to athletics. So uh, Kaisley was asking before about like seat changes. The district and principals are meeting, oh, couple meetings happening today and, and I think maybe tomorrow uh, we were told as faculty this morning and it'll be interesting to see what will happen right if there's some hybrid model for athletes of what would happen because Olivia really stinks you guys are right there and you have a chance to do some good stuff and you would hate for things to sort of fall apart at the end so um, uh, and, and how do we balance it who knows that's a big question but just as a heads up Maybe we'll have more clarity tomorrow because right now, Kennedy, you're either like in or you're out, right? Like there's no really in between. Maybe for athletes, there's like some in between. But also, you don't want to do like preferential treatment too, like yeah. you know. Well, it be so sad. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes. as I would hate to be an administrator trying to like balance it because on one end, like students, you know, Olivia, you're doing everything you can to like follow the protocols with the intent of being able to play. And if you get randomly dinged because somebody else gets it, you feel like, ah, is that justice? But it's hard. So we'll see tomorrow. We'll see. I'm thinking maybe there's like a third option for maybe athletes without being totally unfair. I don't know. I don't know. But we'll see tomorrow. Okay. Um, so we left off yesterday talking about a mutant crab. Uh, Nate correctly identified that it was from the 14th Amendment, which is... Amazing, dude, like that you found that. Because even scholars today are like, they'll read the 14th Amendment and be like, what? I mean, it's equal protection, due process, and privileges and immunities, but they're like, I don't see anything about incorporation. Okay, guys, for five more points, can anybody, so crack open your constitution, 14th Amendment, that's X I V, I believe. Yes. Fourteenth Amendment. Why can't they just put numbers? <laughs> it's so full. Yeah, why is it all English? Okay, for a couple points here, let's think about this. In law school, I had a professor who was very angry, and you can see why. Law school, it doesn't have to have the Roman numerals, but Latin throughout it, right? They're speaking Latin. All these legal terms are Latin based. And so you have a very fair question of why are all these terms in Latin? Like, why do we do it? Because it's fancy. It's fancy. So why do legal experts like to be fancy? Because it makes them sound smart. smart. So it's more makes them sound smart. <laughs> so if it was to confuse, <laughs> to confuse people, you're getting there. Like, to like it makes sense. Understand it, then you can like twist Ooh. your thing, and then you can be like, well, it says this. But if I'm here and you're here, not knowing what amicus curiae means. Um, if, if that's the case, then I feel more important, powerful, and if you're looking at the law and like, I don't understand, this is a statutory limit, and I don't get what that means, and it, it then says, you know, an ex post facto, what does that mean? I've got to go to a lawyer and get information. It makes lawyers in the legal world seem so, like, pious and high, and you is so lowly. Oh, poor citizen. You must come to us, the fount of all knowledge. There is an angle that's very frustrating about that. So you said Roman numerals, why? The whole legal world is like, we like to be fancy and we like to have power. Um, and that's, I personally do not like that. <clears throat> they don't let cameras in the Supreme Court because they don't want to <coughs> see judges sleep, which happens 
a ton. Because they're all old. They are. <laughs> and you guys, we talked about, you sort of know why, because like, I ain't giving up this seat for nothing. Not that they clock that way. But they're going to be there sleeping, and they're feeling Kennedy very, like, removed right. from society. We have them literally dress in robes, Hogwarts style. We have them in buildings of pillars, speaking Latin. It sounds almost like Catholic clerics or church yeah. leaders. Does that make sense? Like it's like when the church leaders when, when it, were the only ones that had the Bible? Yeah, it, it is. You're like, I'm not saying we want to democratize this, but like it feels like they're putting on airs just to be in a country that has outlawed titles of nobility. That seems to be a little odd, right? Yeah. You guys get what I'm saying there? Yeah. Um, so, good good recognition of the new rules. Uh, in Amendment 14, which still is X, I, V. Cool. Um, in the first part, before it gets to the privileges and immunities and equal protection and all that stuff, uh, can anybody see where somebody could read the incorporation doctrine into the 14th Amendment? What is the so, Section 1, looking at that, I'll give you a hint. It's in Section 1. What part gives Congress sort of the power to watch over the states? What wording there? Yeah, Hunter? There it is. That's it. It's that term where it specifically says no states. Now, the framers of the 14th Amendment happened at what time, again, was the 14th Amendment passed? Um, I don't know. It was applied in, like, the 60s, but it was 1868. So that happened right after? Oh. After what? Civil War. There it is. Yeah, Reconstruction Era. Thank you. Um, so, yes, very good. It happened right after that. Good job, Nate, as well. Uh, and, and sorry, Hunter, in identifying, got the brain trust over here now. Uh, you guys identified that it means no state shall mess with you. The, the creators of this after the Civil War were thinking more like generally, like, we're going to be more specific that you can't just mess with people, uh, white, black, or otherwise, but especially on the issue of equal protection and privileges and immunities and due process. We're going to make the Fifth Amendment even more specific. Then a hundred years later, some of you are saying the 60s, that's where people are like, oh, the southern states still haven't got it. Let's force some more. Okay? So that's where they say it's in the 14th Amendment. Do you read, Hunter, or anybody else, the term incorporation anywhere in the 14th Amendment? No. Sophie's right. No, you don't. So it's like legal scholars saying, like, we've got to force the southern states. They done messed up. Let's control them. So if you look at our lovely graph back there, the crabs, the mutant crab who's controlling stuff, um, for sure is the national government who's gotten more and more power. It's eating Lucas, all the other crabs, and coming out of the bucket, and it's coming for you. Like a horror movie of crabs. That sounds bad. Nope. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, uh, so moving on. <laughs> I probably should have said that on recording. Uh, and I'm too lazy to edit that later, so we won't. Um, all right, so pushing on, uh, the idea. Sorry, we interfered. You're good. In our own little world. That's fine, as I am too at times. Um, on the idea of the incorporation doctrine, I, I. Sarah mentioned this, I think, as we were leaving yesterday, of like, what's good about the incorporation doctrine? So I'll ask it again. What is good about the incorporation doctrine? In the 40s, 50s, and 60s, and all these Jim Crow laws are there, and Congress is like, oh my gosh, we gotta step in and get more power. What's good about that? It stopped yeah. what was wrong with that time, like the Jim Crow laws and stuff. So. Yeah, I mean, it did a trade. Were you gonna say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say it stopped the Jim Crow laws. Yeah, yeah. just as simple as that. Simple as that. I mean, they got more involved and they, they exerted more control. So yeah, yeah, absolutely. That was a good thing about it. But again, the bad thing about that is, looking at our lovely graph or, or uh, diagram, what's the bad thing? The power. Who gets the power? The federal government. Yeah, the federal government gets a lot of power. So there's there's pros and cons. Um, who here owns a dog? Do we have a dog? Okay. Silent. Who has a dog? Uh, keep your hands up. Keep your hand up if you have a dog and they are inside mostly. Okay. So most of you. Um, so, Austin, I love you, Sophie. Thank you. You guys have seen that. You have the dog in there. As you're trying to, like, potty train, if you will, or, like, house train the dog, um, inevitably there's mistakes. Yeah. Right? 
All right. So sometimes dog owners, I don't know if this is like Nat Geo approved, <laughs> when they get that like dog and the dog puppy or whatever, like has an accident in the house on mom's prized carpet. And some will have the dog, you guys might know what I'm saying, they'll grab the dog by the collar and they'll shoot. Look at what you did! Look at it! Look at what you did! And the dog's like, woo, woo. Like, I don't know like, am I wrong in that? Have you guys seen that? Have you seen that like behavior of like, look at it! How dare you? And like you're yelling strong authoritative measures. That's the federal government for the states. But the crap on the carpet, in this case, is not just the doo-doo. In this case, it is Jim Crow laws and discrimination against minorities. So when Arizona is like, oh, come on, federal government, why do you have so much power? Federal government says, go talk to Alabama. Go talk to Mississippi. Go talk to Arkansas, right? This is why we can't have nice things. That's, I mean, do you guys get that? Did the southern states ruin it for people? I don't say ruined it, but they kind of... They did. They, they did, because that gives the national government more power, but it's controversial. So this is the biggest strength. Fifth Hour was asking about this uh, a couple weeks ago, before the student teacher came. And they were asking, so wait, when you're looking at the South, what is one of the biggest arguments for the Democratic Party? It's the South. The Democratic Party hunter wants to give traditionally federal government more power, right? Maybe not to control you, but like to be safe. And the Democratic Party and the Republicans say, well, we want more control and liberty and freedom. And all the Democrats have to do is slavery. How'd that go? You guys see that logic? One of the biggest arguments for joining like the Democratic Party. Ironically, the Democrats were the ones who held slaves then, but we won't get into it. Now the Democratic Party who favors those who are minorities and so forth. The biggest argument for joining that party is you need more government control, because if you don't, you will have another civil war. You guys see that line of logic? Whereas Republicans will say, like, we want more freedom, we want more autonomy. And then Democrats will respond and say, oh, we tried that before, how'd that go? Is that mean Democrats are better? No, that just means the, the strongest argument for the Democrats would probably be that. We're going to get to the strongest argument for the Republicans in our last section. Um, that like they have one that's very, very hard to answer, if you will. Yeah, Sam. I don't know. I feel like sometimes people like maybe the civil war can come from having too much federal government because people like their freedom, and so it could like cause some contention there. And, and during the time the Confederate States were saying that, they were saying, like, we want more autonomy and sovereignty over ourselves. Um, the biggest problem is, is if people give that excuse and veil it as a way to persecute minorities, then we got trouble, right? That's the balancing act. And both parties are ultimately flawed because it's a false dilemma. You know, Lucas, again, uh, what's your favorite drink, Pepsi or Coke? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's your favorite drink? Pepsi or Coke? Coke. That's a good point. Okay. So, meaning, <laughs> this is this is U.S. politics, right? So the idea, Sammy, of like one or the other being better or not is probably flawed. Um, but you're right that too much government control can be bad, and Republicans <laughs> can counter in that. The problem with the Civil War is like there were so many arguments of like give us more and more control locally, but if they're using it, Sammy, to like persecute minorities, then we got troubles. And that's, that's the weird thing. Ironically, the Civil War was fought and won by the Republicans, and the Democrats lost for slaveholders, and now the stereotypes flip. You get what I'm saying there? Republicans traditionally do not support minorities, and Democrats do. What president changed that guy for five points? So, so Lincoln was the one who started the Republican Party, right? He's like, Republic equal under the law, hence that, that title. Um, but there's a president for the Democrats who changed that stereotype. There's a president who's like, I know we were slaveholders and all, and like we persecuted you, yeah, and brought you over from West Africa, but now we're gonna give benefits to you. So please vote for us. Sam? Was it Roosevelt? Yes, yes, very good, very good. One, two, three, four, five, very good. And it was FDR. Sammy, very good. FDR came out and he forever changed the Democratic Party. So now Democrats are known as being like the party for minorities, right? And and that's probably why. If that gives you some history on context. So good points there, Maisie. Okay, I have a kind of random question, but it relates to government. Fair enough. So I 
friend sent me a meme. And it, 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 <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice, and nice. And it was nice. like, remember how George Washington said that we shouldn't have split parties? In yeah, the right. Is that true? Oh, he did. His farewell address. I didn't actually the irony that. is is that Hamilton really helped pen that address. And then the moment like his back was turned, Hamilton's like, yeah, about Federalists. Like, it's human nature. We want to go into groups because we don't want to think for ourselves. Yeah, well, no, like, it doesn't make sense. Like, if we're all sitting there, like... It's true, though. I mean, it's, it's human nature, but say that one more time. Like, it doesn't make sense if we're all just, like, sitting there, like, with all these, like, different political views that we can't, like, break it. Or yeah. Something. Right, like, and and it's natural that we want to group things in. You know that makes yeah. sense. But Washington did. That Washington was like, he did not believe in what he called political factions, where like you would get to a group so much that you had I don't know like a Jefferson or Adams calling each other hermaphrodites or whatever. Sorry, um, but but they did. Right, he didn't want that to happen. But the moment he left, like they did. Um, I thought that was true, though. I was like, wait a bit. Yeah, totally. Washington, thats he didn't want it to happen, and for, for good reason. Because you want, I, ideally, case, we want you to think for yourself and be like, let me look at this candidate, this individual, not just for candidate evaluations, but like on the policies. Let me weigh things out left and right. But ideally, that's their reality is something different. Mm -hmm. Or like, I'm a registered member of this party. Can you tell me how to think? Right, that's sort of the idea. Yeah, Trey? So with... Our focus on the Democratic and Republican Party, do you think we're missing out on a balance of the two, like a good balance of the two? Like, I fear, I mean, it's hard because it's my personal opinion and I separate that from the cur curriculum. I do fear that we're missing out on, um, I'll, let me say it this way. <clears throat> I'm to say this PC. If any person can see President Trump, and they might completely hate his morals or lack thereof or whatever, his disposition, everything, for whatever reason. If you cannot acknowledge that under his administration there have been at least one or two good things that have happened, you're falling into a trap. Like, let's be real, and I fear that with having this like demagoguery between the two of like, they're evil, we're angels. They say that Trump has never done anything good. That's 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 a lie. And I think if we get into that trap, we're, we're, we're lemming. We're going to run off a cliff and die um, because somebody's telling us to do that. Does that make yeah. sense? Like I, I do. I fear. And likewise, the other side, if if they look at Obama's regime and they're like, no, he was a socialist pig from Kenya. Man, I got to careful what I say here online. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> if people were to say that and say he never did anything good, it's like. You're, you're being disingenuous. That's not real. There were some good things. Anybody can acknowledge the fact that Osama bin Laden that was executed under his call and his command. Does that make sense? I, I do. I feel like we're missing the nuance of it. Yes. Um, hopefully our electoral system doesn't allow for other parties, but other things, I wish there were. Because if you're a Democrat and you believe in um, no abortion and no capital punishment, and you're like a strong Catholic, and that's where most Democrats are with Catholicism. And they're like, yeah, Democrat. It's very disingenuous that you're grouped in the same one as those who support LGBTQ plus rights. And you're like, I, I have to be in the same group? I don't, I don't get that, right? Like, that doesn't make sense. And that's where I think, yeah, we might be missing some things. Some nuance. Yeah, Talia? Why do you think our country has become like, I feel like they're less on the religious side. Like, I feel like I mean, I still think that they're centered on morals, but it's more on, like, who's right and who's wrong, and they're becoming Ooh. more stubborn to, like, even consider. Okay. I will, like I will say that. this, Talia, it's a great question, and then we'll get into um, differing House and Senate, right? Because I do want to get to that um, today. You say, I believe you're correct. Right now, maybe because of media, an election year, Maddie, I don't know. We are very much focused on who is right instead of getting it right. So for instance, with the whole like uh, school policy living on like athletes and what can we do to help them stay in but also stay in school. Thankfully our school isn't worrying about like, I want to be right, so it's my policy or no policy, right? I believe our administrators and principals want to get it right. You're not wrong to think our government officials are not really considering that. They, they want to get the credit instead of getting it right. So what has caused that to happen? I think the advent of more social media hunter, as you were saying earlier about the the Social Dilemma movie on Netflix, which I haven't seen yet, but I'm interested in. I think that has magnified things of like, let's 
be right instead of getting it right. That has made it more, we're more stubborn. And final thing I'll tell you is the Pew Research Center, which has done national polling down, is probably the most accurate, even though 2016 they got it wrong, um, but pretty accurate since the Civil War, has said that our country has, we are the most divided we have ever been in terms of this side or that side, <clears throat> except one other, one other time in our country's history. The Civil War, we talked about this. Exactly. So that angle of that has happened, I think the advent of media, very good, amazing, has, has perpetuated that. Um, I think, because you have so much more media, it's exponential since I was even your age, like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. As a millennial, I can tell you like, good luck Gen Z, I don't know how you're gonna parse through that, that's really rough. So I think those are the reasons why, and you're not wrong, yeah. And do you think that like, it's only gonna get worse? This because is, we already right, have it, right, it's like, right. it's there, and we're progressing in media and yeah. internet, but it's just yeah. getting worse, and, we're, and it's going to become more, because there's different parties in Democrat and Republican, mm -hmm. but it's just going to be like those two. It, yeah, it's so separate and divided. This is my hope, and I might be naive in this. Um, right around the time you guys were born, like, people, consumers, discovered reality TV, okay? So the advent of like Survivor and Biggest Loser and American Idol, they're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. <laughs> and so networks paid for every single TV studio to have like umpteen gajillion reality shows on everything. And then about the early, well, the late aughts, so 2009, 2010, the networks decided, oh, we're not actually making money because consumers had gotten too saturated on it, that they scaled back. Do we still have some of the mainstays? Yeah, like Survivor or The Voice is stuck around, right? But it's not nearly as what it was before. My hope is that as consumers, we can make choices, maybe it's naive, to say, this is clickbait media. I'm not clicking on that. I'm not clicking on that. Because if we reduce clicks, that means they reduce views. That means they reduce ad time. That means they reduce profit. And that the hopefully Yahoo News or ABC News or MSNBC or whatever or Fox News will say, okay, let's tone down the rhetoric here because it's not selling. That's the only hope that I have is that consumers can somehow come together and make that choice. That's that's my thought. Is that maybe it's naive? No, yeah. I just wonder like also if it's just because we're born. Like this is what we've grown up in. It's like like I I yeah. used to watch America's Got Talent as a kid growing up and now I'm like Right, right. And there could be that angle, right, for politics. We're like, okay, guys, shut up. You know, this is this yeah, is fake. And I Stop. Like, as we, like, grow up, I feel yeah. like our generation yeah. grows up very politically. Yeah. Like, because of what it is right now, and we're taught so young. Yeah. That I'm scared that we're going to, like, fall off from, like, the political actual aspect to, like, yeah. what we're taught, which is necessarily not even politics anymore. Right. That's, that's very astute. That's my hope, and hopefully we will get tired of it, like you're saying for reality shows. Um, Lucas? Why is it that people that go like Republican on this, and like Democrat on this, like candidates like that, instead of like getting the both best of both worlds, both parties just end up hating them? Like, why can't you find a middle without There is a middle. The, there is a middle politically in the U.S., unfortunately. The only thing that the two parties hate more than each other is a third party, a hybrid. Yeah. A hybrid because it's their power, it's their power. And so they are very fearful of that, even though it could be more just. So you say, why is it? Because they see something, wait, wait, no, no, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. no. You're trying to take power away from the Republicans or Democrats, and it's gotta be either or. And, and that's why it happens, it's wrong that it happens. Sorry to make Sophie more stressed, if she's like, I don't like this, the world is a lie. Uh, Ellie, last thing, yes. Okay, so I do think, like, with media especially, it is very much like, like, there are news stations, like, news, things that, like, they'll give you fake news, like, on both sides completely, yep. and especially when you're in either party, you read into each one of these things, and you Good. just get more and more hate for the other Good. party, so it really isn't as much, it, I mean, to me, it feels like we don't care, I mean, we care about the better of America and whatever, Right. But it's almost like I want them to lose. It's like a competition, and people are very yep. competitive yep. with politics especially. Yep. And I do think that like some of these problems, like yeah. abortion, <clears throat> gun control, LGBTQ, these right. things are so controversial right. that a third party with like, in, like a hybrid, a hybrid right. would make both parties super upset because it's not exactly what they want. They want to be right. It's completely like and black not, and white, and you can't. Yeah. They and won't not, have the other way. 
<laughs> Guys, remember these ideas, ladies and gentlemen. You are in a good 2020 election year. Remember these ideas. Now, before Olivia jumps me for not actually letting you out, write down one thing here. For the House, write down one thing here. She's like getting the shit out right now, okay? Uh, under the Wait, House in general. Shiv, shiv, va, 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 shiv, va, like a shame. I was like, yo, you're a widow. You're far from the ghetto. I love every time you swear. Sorry, I don't swear at all. Okay, um, shiv, so how many house members are there? We're talking in general. We're going to compare. So do you say four? Ooh, there's some. Eight. Ooh, 435. 435. Some of you remember from the electoral thing, right? So it doesn't include DC because we don't want them to vote. Um, it's 435 members. Very good. 435 members. Now here's the interesting thing. Since about 1911, 1912, um, they cap the number at 435. Why? In the House, the lower chamber. Is it because it's odd? No. Because well, it's odd, okay, they want to keep the odd number so that it will force, you know, you can't really have a tie. Like less opinions? What do you mean by less opinions? You're on something. Like, like, every state kind of has its dominant uh -huh. party that they yeah. go to, and it's like less, like, the more people, the more opinions, like, the more people in the middle, and things that wise. Yeah, you're on something, you're like 90% of the way there. It's less chaotic, yeah. right? If you go to the UK, there's like 600 plus members of the House of Commons, and you guys remember for my class, like it's crazy. House of Commons is crazy. Awesome. It's cool, but it's crazy. Mexico's got more. It's crazy. They call it the Siesta Congress because they don't get anything done, but there's a ton of them. Um, <laughs> uh, and and that means Talia, they want to cap it so it's not as chaotic, right? But the question, the problem though, is if in the original draft of the Constitution, it was talking about like six to maybe 60,000 people that a representative is representing, what on average now is the average number of constituents or people a representative is representing? Um, yeah, that was a lot of, a lot of representatives. Like okay, let's do the math here. <laughs> Has our population gone up as a country since 1911? Yes. yes. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right? So if we're at 350, 360, 400 million people, okay? It's gone up, gone up a ton. Each state is allowed to have, based on population, a number of representatives. North Carolina lost some because there's been a westward migration, if you will, um, of people. Heck, I'm, I'm coming from the East Coast. I, I'm here, right? I'm an example of that. To the west, Arizona. You have, like, North and South Carolina. It's over to Arizona. Like, tons of people going there. For opportunities for jobs, I think, to escape maybe a degree of racism. African American population is a big move out of North and South Carolina. But they are. They're moving for other reasons, too. Now, I don't know all the answers. But guys, as they're going from the East Coast to the West, that means Western states will gain population. So we gained, about 10 years ago, we gained a fourth representative. We have four in the state of Utah. That means on average for the country, each representative is over how many people? Because if they're representing people, right? Yeah. Say it one more time. Like a million. Yeah, exactly. So, so put in parentheses, based on population, about one for every 800,000. About one for every 800,000. About one for every 800,000. So Trey, if you do the math there, can you as a representative, and I know, do you guys get what I'm saying now? Like you're over a ton of people. Senate's different. They're not really over people. They're just like there as old dudes, okay? Yeah. Representatives, they're trained monkeys. Like monkey see, monkey do, monkey with no attitude. Whatever you say, I do as a representative. Can I effectively go door to door to a million people? Hey, what do you think on this issue? No. Hey, what's your opinion on this? No, it's not gonna happen. So there's a problem with the House of Representatives. Tali, we want to keep it orderly, but the all other problem is, does it effectively represent you? No. Not really. Rob Bishop, who's leaving, right, at the end of his term. But if has anybody ever met him? I'm just curious. Talia has, that's great. Yeah, I also have a question. And I'll get to you in a second, but Talia, Talia has, can he effectively, Ethan, represent like your stance on legalization of marijuana? 
know you, right? It's really hard. I don't know the answer for that, and I think there isn't maybe a great answer. It just stuff. It, it stinks, okay? Because uh, there's a ton of people. So let's take a quick break. Um, get up, move around. I do have a clip for you. It's the first actual clip I've shown in like a week and a half. Sorry. Um, so yeah, get a drink, etc. Talia, you had a question, right? No, yeah. it was just a statement, but you already said it, so. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's a great answer, but it, it just stinks. I feel like our country's coming a little bit corrupt. So, Livy, I gotta ask. Did Sarah get hit? Okay. Okay, okay. Just, just one. Okay, we'll take it. We will take it. Lucas, that is not the answer. <laughs> We're not doing like ethnic cleansing, like, well, you guys have got to go. You're a little too old. We got to. So I was just yeah. like searching on the internet, like the house of authorization. And like in Article 1, Section 2, it says the number of representatives shall not exceed for every 30,000. Is there an amendment about that? Uh, why is there yeah. a dog? No. Uh, I'll clean these up. I'll clean these up later. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. I'll clean up later. No. The Legislative okay, Act was passed at the turn of the century, oh, okay. in which they said that's obviously outdated and outnumbered, and we have to like update for it. And that's how they like got around it, because those numbers were more of like a, a specific dark board, yes. But a constructionist legal scholar would say we should have an amendment yeah. doing it, but we just have an act. Because that's kind of scary, because we could say like, oh, this is just outdated, this is outdated. Right, right. And that's where like, we'll get to it with the judicial section. Anybody who says like the Constitution's a living document, there's, there's pros to that, right? But the con is like, what's the line here? Yeah. I love it, Libby. It, yeah, it's like, well, I don't know what the line is. It's, it's really out there. That's good on you for looking it up. There was just an act. Um, Yeah, Livy, they, uh, <coughs> it was 1911, but they justified it by saying the 14th Amendment says that it should be based on the apportionment of the states, and so they take that general wording with this specific one you're reading there to, like, say we can, we can sort of flex it a little bit and change it. Yeah, but, but it's... A they use the 14th Amendment for a lot of, like... Gosh, they use it for, like, everything! Because it's... It's so long that they read so much into it. In fact, in the Supreme Court today, one of, yeah, I'd say one of the most contested amendments is the 14th Amendment. Equal protection clause, what does that mean? Yeah. Due process, what does that mean? It's one of the most contested ones. It's really good, that's like the AP level. Very, very good. Very good, Libby. Uh, okay, do have a clip for you guys. Um, I decided to show you one that is a little bit not politics related because Maisie I, I want to have something to laugh at that's not politics related because it feels like we're getting a lot of politics uh, so this one is on gene editing hopefully you guys find it humorous you guys, you guys have, you guys have too many shooters. So Gentlemen, how'd that, uh, did you guys have your, your uh, faculty basketball game? Yeah, we lost. 
Wait, where are we playing again, Wait. though? I thought the second. I thought oh, the no, the second one. Match. The second one didn't end up happening. Oh, yes. so yeah, yes. yes. They they got a little scared. <laughs> yeah, they got they, they got, got to nurse scared, their wounds. We we all have basketball games. Okay. Well, no, well, I talked to Gordon. And he said he can't do it. Science. Essentially, math disguised as dinosaurs and out of space to try and seem interesting. Now, specifically, the story concerns gene editing. It's a, it's a topic you may have heard about, given it's now a plot point in action movies like Rampage. What's happening to my friend? I'm the street in the game. Genetic editing. Changes will be incredibly unpredictable. Is he the only one? Oh, you didn't know about the 30 foot wall? Wait a second! Wait just a second there! Let me get this straight! This is a movie about aerial military equipment being harnessed to fight a 30 foot wolf, and it is not called Wolf Blitzer! That is a huge missed opportunity! That's movie malpractice there! But look, gene editing isn't only showing up in movies starring Rock the Dwayne Johnson. No, it's also now constantly brought up on TV with, with varying degrees of excitement or extreme alarm. A stunning and controversial breakthrough in science has arrived. Gene editing. This is a milestone that could one day erase hereditary conditions. Some fear the technology could be used to create designer babies. This technology has the potential to change our DNA and the DNA of all organisms alive and extinct. Could that lead to eugenics? Could that lead to new divides in humanity? I don't know. That stuff is that stuff is scary. Exactly. It seems gene editing is either going to cure all disease or kill every last one of us. And the truth is, any time there is a bold new technology, people do tend to go nuts. I'm guessing after the invention of the refrigerator, there were a rash of headlines like, Can meat be too cold? And what about the milkman, America's friendly neighborhood weirdo? So tonight we thought we'd take some time to talk about gene editing, what it is, what its potential could be, and what the chances are that we're all going to be killed by a 30 foot wolf. And, and let's... We'll stop there, okay. Um, Let me finish it for you. Hi. <laughs> chances are high. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Thank you very much. Um, it was so bad. So... It was. Gene editing. <laughs> did you guys actually see the movie? Yeah. I, I watched it. It was terrible. It, did was, you? it was so it was uh, so dumb. It seems so campy, like it was made up or something. I, I didn't watch like, it. Like I didn't go to theaters for it. It was bad, but it's not real. It was a it was a it was a red it was a red box movie, but that's right. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay, um, so we have 435, and Livy, if you didn't hear, uh, correctly surmise, wait, the Constitution specifically says, and unlike the three-fifths compromise, which was, you know, how blacks, not that they had the chance to vote, but in terms of southern population could be used for representation models, that compromise was struck out of the Constitution, like crossed out. The part Livy found of, like, wait, it shouldn't exceed, was it 30,000? Yeah, it was 30,000. Yeah, that's not happening. Right? That's, and they took that in the 14th Amendment and like said, no, we can apportion it according to what's necessary for the states. Sounds a lot like what clause of the Constitution? Necessary and proper. Yes, very good, <laughs> very good. Um, Spencer seemed very excited about that too. Necessary and proper. Okay. Um, so now let's shift over to the Senate side. So we're gonna keep jumping back and forth. Um, how many, let's compare them, how many uh, Members are in the Senate. Is it two one hundred. So two each state, which means one hundred. One hundred. So write that down under Senate. One hundred members. There's a lot of you who could take the AP government test. <laughs> actually, the AP Gov test, the AP US Gov is actually it's a lot easier than A Push, a lot easier than AP Euro. I'm tempted. Can you take it with no consequences? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat you. You've got number 27 wrong. Bust the kneecap. <laughs> uh, there's no other than that you lose $91 or whatever. Oh, you have to pay? I'm not doing He's like, nope. <laughs> got to have a nice dress. I got to buy. Too bad. No, no you keep college credit. Yeah, I'll buy college credit. But uh, anyway, so tempting. Years. You guys know that. 100 members. And in parentheses, Tali, like you said, two for each state, right? Two for each state. 
Now, if you remember from US History Hunter, this is that compromise, right, where it's like, okay, we're not going to do it by proportion, meaning by only representation, like population. We'll have the upper chamber also be just like even, knowing that we really, so if you were like states, like countries, even before we were one, so we were trying to balance that out. So, 100 members, two for each state. And that means California, with its gajillion of people, has how many senators? 85. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the House, right? Like, you look at it, it's like, dang, it's a lot. Okay, so you've got the Senate, then has two, and Delaware, uh, my home state, with like eight people in it, has how many senators? Two. It seems a little unfair, but the House helps balance it out in a way, right? Yeah. Um, and there is, uh, think of this, there's an even number, so Talia, there could be a tie. Question mark. Stay tuned till tomorrow because we'll find out then. Uh, the next section we'll get into that. Let's go back to the house. Uh, the second thing you have written down for the house is how long are their how long are their terms? Six, six, four, eight, no. six. Yeah. I love that like multiples of two. So it's not six. Six is going to be for the Senate. Senate. So, so the president is four, six. right? Two. Two. Years. You do the math, you're like, dang, that's quick. So underneath the house, two year terms. Two year terms. I mean, so so let's say that, uh, let's say Perry, I think that's who's running the Democratic Party for this first house district. Let's say he pulls off a miracle and wins, right? It would be sort of a miracle to be in Northern Utah Democrat holding seat. Okay, if you were to win, he would have to yes go and get sworn and all that stuff in DC. But then Charlie, like right away, he'd have to turn back around and start campaigning. So if you're in the house, like it's a constant machine of campaigning. You are kissing babies and shaking hands and not the other way around a ton. Like throughout your whole daily routine is doing that. Um, so the house has a little bit hard time, guys. For a couple points, why? Why did the founders say we want to have it be two year terms? for the house. Why? They could have said four. They could have said six. Spencer? Was it to like change things up and get the opinions in? Yeah, so one angle is like, you want to just get some variety. I think that's fair. All right, Trey? Well, if like, if they're two year terms, they're still trying, like, kind of like- What do you mean trying? You're getting like, there. Like if they're, if it's just for life or something, then they're not gonna uh, try and Go for the pe help the people's opinion go through it. Right. Yeah, they're, they're just going to do what they want. Right, Talia? I was just going to say it helps us get represented more because we're voting like choosing. Talia, you are on fire. I mean, Trey and Smith are very good, but like very astute coaching comments. Very, very true. Lucas, like, you're doing good, dude. <laughs> well, <I'm sorry. laughs> they're there. Okay. But but no, you're right on. Because it forces them to say, like, what do you want to do? Now, Brendan, they can't knock door to door, right? We already talked about that. But they have to try and play the game of, like, oh, that's right. I like you. Yeah, you're great. Mm -hmm. Vote for me. Like, they have to do that a ton. Whereas with other offices, they get in and it's like, see ya. I'll be there in, like, three years. Here, it's, like, all the time. It forces them to try to get our, the people say, um, we get represented, right? That's the intent of it. So, yeah. Um, there's some good and bad to it, but on this same point, so how many terms? What are the term limits for the presidency? Two. Two, right? So a total of? Eight years. Ten years, you're correct. What? Eight. Yeah. Yeah, the longest president can serve is ten years. Uh, yeah, moving on. Um, uh, see, Heather, I'm just giving spoilers out left and right. I'm like a good YouTuber now. This is great. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll get to the executive branch and we'll talk about there's a weird scenario where it could be 10 years. Yes, traditionally it's eight years, right? That's what it is. Two terms. However, for the House, they have two year terms. How many terms are there? So we think four, so total of eight, right? Like totaling what the president went. That's Kennedy. So it's five and ten. You think that we can elect somebody in and they can just keep serving for like 48 years? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's exactly right, guys. In parentheses, Dane, you want to write, no term limits. No term limits. So we have two-year terms, no term limits. 
Kennedy. When do like federal elections happen? Like is it Great question. 2020 and then yep. 2022? I'm sort of glad it happens on the even year so it keeps me straight. Yeah, that means 2020, 2022. I feel like that's bad. Oh because, well, not like bad, but like when it's an election year, there's like so much going on. People aren't really going to be paying close attention to who's right. Oh, uh, so Kennedy for five more points, okay? It's a chance for you. Because you're right on. Uh, it's bad for us as voters. <laughs> it's bad for us as voters because if it's on the same time as presidential ones or governor ones or whatever, right? It's bad for us. And I, I think you're right there. But for five points, why is it that those that get elected in office usually stay in office? Because they're like, oh, well, he's already in, he's probably... Because it takes a while to get, to get like? stuff going, especially through government. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, like wait, two years, like you could do stuff, but not like a whole time. So it's like, they're in, and they started this project to right. support it. And so you're like, because we're not going to wait to, we need to give them time. Kennedy, it's easier for us to be like, well, they're already in. I don't have time to research all these other ones. So if you get elected to the House, you in, baby. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> like, numerically speaking, Senate's a little different, President's different, but if you get elected to the House, like, ride that sucker. You're there for 40, 60 years. Like, you can just keep going. Yes, I get elected every two years, but then people, because they're overwhelmed. Kennedy, you're right. I don't have time for it. I'm just going to say, oh, he's in there? Sounds good. If you got elected before, I'm sure he's good. Oh, did he say something horribly racist? Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but it means like we got to pay attention. That's rare. Do they get out? Yeah, they get outed, but sometimes um, uh, they do. Five points, very good, Ken. Um, but rarely, because you're wrong, you're right that it's harder for the voters. I guess for me as a government teacher, it's easier to remember it's every two years. So they're they're all going. All 435 are up for election in a month. Does that make sense? So that's where every two years you could have a change in who's the majority and stuff. Okay, uh, he's doing great. No term limits. Oh, oh, good and bad. What's good? Hamilton said there should never be term limits, as I say it like Hamilton would. Um, for a house? Spencer is not impressed. <laughs> Historically speaking, actually. <laughs> Hamilton, H. Sizzle, he wrapped that sucker. Um, okay, so, so Talia, I'm talking about the House, and you say Senate in general, too. Why are term limits, hmm, why is Hamilton right that we should not have term limits? Like, he said, no, 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 they talked about it. And Charlie said, no, we're, we're not going to do term limits. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Why? If, uh, if he's doing things right, then people like him, just keep him in. Right, isn't that sounding very capitalist? Like, if you're doing well, you should be rewarded. Right? Like if you're doing well, if you're earning money and selling a good product, and Sarah mentioned this before, like it is a results-based thing. If there's good results, keep them in. There's no issue. And Hamilton said we want to have the cream of the crop be in our government. So let's not have like a rotating thing to help us feel good like a Disney Channel movie. Like screw that. Not that you know what Disney Channel was back then. But he said let's make it where it's results-based. Absolutely. Talia? Would it also be to keep like a solid base since like? The president is getting reelected every four years, and it like has not like the whole government oh, is like banished. Like yeah. it keeps a base. It's it, it is in a sense that you go two, four, six, mm -hmm. or well, depending on the position, um, because it does stagger it, right? It staggers it because you want to have you don't want to have everybody in government changing out every two years. Yeah. You do want to stagger it, so the house um, allows them to stay in to maybe have some continuity. They want to reward that. Merrick, what's the bad thing about no term limits? How could you talk back to Hamilton? Um, if he isn't representing the way you want, you don't really get much of like, a say. Like, yeah. I mean, take, you like, could vote him out, right? But a state that's like mainly like one party and you're not really, you don't, you know? I don't right, know. right, that you might be outnumbered. Is there they anything get, like, bad, Kennedy? Too much power? Like a Putin thing? Yeah, man, there's, it seems like too much power. So once you're in, because people aren't paying attention to the ballot, you get to stay in office for 20 plus years, and it just feels wrong that like we should have a variety, and that we're not actually having true competition, where we're just looking at Lucas and we're like, yeah, sounds good. Yeah, because I think like things change. So like, if you don't want to have like the same guy who started in like 1970 and right. now we're in 2020, and like the world's so different, like totally. if you just kind of keep things going like when he was a teenager, right? Like. 
It the, needs to change. The only reason Rob Bishop, the only reason we're having change in this district, right, for 24 years or whatever, is because Rob Bishop is retiring. And then it's not because he like got beat out. So you're right. It feels bad because they're not reflecting us maybe as much. Though they've got to get elected. It feels bad because there's too much power. It seems like a lot trade today. See your hand, or was it Lucas? Uh, it might have been me. Oh, I was I was thinking like uh, if they have uh, unlimited term limits, then they like they have no term limits, then they don't want to get crap done quick, like because like yeah, that's true. I didn't think of that. If you have like four years and you know you have four years, you're gonna go in and get right. It's like let's get it done, but it's like it seems like the whole fat cats mentality. You guys see those movies where like you walk in the cigar room and they're all like sitting there like eh, we're controlling everything. It feels that way because they get to stay. Forever, right? It feels like yeah. Like a, a <laughs> like, yeah. Like, awesome. like, yeah. It's not. It's not. Though they represent us, Ellie. The numbers show they stay usually for the house. So term limits are maybe good for them, but personally, it's up and down. I can see it both ways on that. I sort of see where Hamilton's coming from. I would probably wish. Well, I won't say my own personal beliefs. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess, yeah, at the end of the trial, yeah. Uh, so, Senate, we'll get to the Senate. Um, the other side, I think Spencer already mentioned, like, how many years they serve, right? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get to them tomorrow. Um, let's do this. I'm thinking, not a number. I'm thinking maybe Friday, I'll give you time. I've charged the laptop, so they're, they've all got charges. On Friday, maybe we'll give you time in class to do research on your uh, on your legislation, right? To look up topics. Does that make sense? Sophie's excited. No, it's most don't either, right? <laughs> the schoolhouse. As you can see here, that's my foundation of. of